when a girl's room is messy, it's Sofia Coppola. It's Hell is a Teenage Girl. It's Lindsay Lohan in an early 2000s movie. It's indie. There has been something of an aesthetic contagion when it comes to the work of Sofia Coppola, one which has drifted from Tumblr to TikTok as successive generations of young women find reflections of themselves in Coppola's tales of girlhood. With her 2023 film, Priscilla, the latest to continue this tradition. Each of these recreations reveals a common denominator across the director's work, a visual focus on the accumulation of ephemera, the placement of clustered objects within a domestic tableau, specifically, the bedroom of the teenager. Throughout the canon of coming-of-age cinema, the bedroom is utilized as an outward expression of an emotionally turbulent psyche. Walls are papered with handmade collages, photos are displayed, clothes are tossed across colorful furniture, in every corner, evidence of youth. There is an organic sense of growth. The room is living, breathing, brimming with the dense foliage of memory. A new layer is added with each shift in adolescent personality. The cinematic bedroom reveals a psychology of character, nuance to be conveyed solely through production design. The panopticon of American suburbia is laid bare in The Virgin Suicides, a film which continues to resonate even 25 years after its initial premiere at Cannes. That girl didn't want to die. She just wanted out of that house. She wanted out of that decorating scheme. The Lisbon sisters find solace in the privacy of their bedroom, a collective space of mourning, of commiserating, of living, and of dying. The neighborhood boys who seek to understand their mystery do so by collecting pieces of ephemera, shreds of evidence that the Lisbon girls exist. Handwritten notes, lipstick and perfume, diary entries, stolen photos. This is their attempt to reconstruct the girls in their absence. However, the bedroom itself remains a border never to be crossed or transgressed. A site of private suffering where men are only ever temporary visitors. Do you mind? In Marie Antoinette, Sofia Coppola's attention to detail works in harmony with the keen eye of production designer K.K. Barrett, creating an opulent backdrop against which claustrophobic scenes of domesticity play. There is no aesthetic mess to Marie's bedroom. It is a site of ceremony above all else, where the most intimate acts are performed with an audience. This is ridiculous. This, madame, is Versailles. It is here where Marie must retreat even further in order to spend time with her friends and companions, delighting in the frivolity of her possessions. There is no place where she is truly offered privacy. Only when she is outdoors does she find solace, and even then, it is an illusion of bucolic bliss. As the revolution draws near, her position becomes increasingly precarious. It is her own love of things which proves to be her downfall in the eyes of the public. The consumerist obsessions of modern America serve as the main focus of Coppola's The Bling Ring, a film where it is the teenage girls who are in the position of violating privacy. Los Angeles is established as a world of interiors, the luxurious and the suburban, the rich saturation of night and the pale, overcast light of day. As the film's titular group of teenagers roam from house to house, they marvel at such symbols of luxury. Shoes, purses, jewelry, a modern-day Versailles. Coppola maintains a clinical distance from her characters, refusing to critique them 
and allowing the audience to appraise their actions. While the pillaged rooms of Paris Hilton's mansion reflect a kind of characteristic narcissism, the homes of the film's main characters are also papered with artifacts of obsession. Not self-obsession, but obsession with the fame and fortune of others. Priscilla serves as both a culmination of Coppola's career so far, as well as a return to her roots. It is a self-aware analysis of American mythology, as well as a classic narrative of self-discovery, one which necessarily follows the trials and tribulations of first love. The film examines the privacy that is required by the wife of an icon, as well as the interiority which is denied to her. The walls of Graceland are sterile white, immaculate, and cultivated. Though contrasting the rest of the mansion with darkness and luxury, Elvis's own bedroom bears little evidence of personal artifact. After Priscilla arrives, she has little influence over her domestic realm. She is seemingly trapped in the precarious snow globe of perfection that is Graceland. Before Elvis comes into her life, what little we see of Priscilla's world still displays an expression of her youth a coming of age interrupted by the destabilizing force of love. It is this reclamation of self which offers a cathartic conclusion to the film. In the end, in the absence of characters who have otherwise moved on, there are only barren walls reflections of a youth that has been left behind. <laughs>